Here is Claude Shannon's diagram by which almost any communication process can be schematically represented. The information source selects the desired message out of a set of possible messages. The transmitter changes the message into the signal, which is sent over the communications channel to the receiver, where it is decoded back into the message and delivered to the destination. Every such system contains noise. Noise is a term used in the communications field to designate any outside force which acts on the transmitted signal to vary it from the original. In this usage, noise does not necessarily mean sound. Reading is a form of communication where the word is the signal, the printed page the transmitter, light the channel, the eye the receiver. Here sound can act as noise and interfere with the message. But in some situations, like reading on a train where the sound level is normally high, it is not the sound that interferes with the communication process as much as the motion and the unpredictable quality of the light source. The quality of light and motion then becomes noise. In radio, noise could be static. In television, noise is often the distortion of the picture through transmitting or receiving. In a typewritten message, the noise source could be in the quality of the ribbon or the keys. And we are all familiar with the carbon copies that keep getting progressively worse. If anything acts on the signal so as to vary it in an unpredictable and undesirable way in the communication system, it is noise.
The brain is usually the information source. From it, the message is selected. The message is a thought, not the words. The vocal mechanism codes the words into vibrations and transmits them as sound across the communications channel, which is, of course, the air. The sound of the word is a signal. The ear picks up the signal, and with the associated eighth nerve, decodes the signal and delivers the message to the destination. This time, noise could originate in the transmitter or in sound violations that disturb the channel. Or it could be a nervous condition on the part of the receiver, and it could change the message from that to the Increasing the power of the transmitter. This combines noise as does the careful beaming of the signal or duplicating of the message by other signals. Now let's consider the amount of information that we can The message itself contains one set. of information that one on-off circuit can handle at one time. It can be on or off. Two bits of information is the amount two circuits can handle. There is a choice of four possible conditions. On-off, off-on, on-on, or off-off. That's very... Destination, their minds, their emotions, their experience. Now in this case, the noise that tends to disrupt the signal can take many forms. It can be the quality of the light, or the color of the light, or the prejudices of the viewer, or the idiosyncrasies of the painter. But besides noise, there are other factors that can keep the information from reaching its destination intact. In any communication system, the receiver must be able to decode something of what the transmitter is for If you speak Chinese to me, I must know Chinese to understand your words. 
But even without knowing the Chinese language, I know that you must have your presents communication of a very complex order. Other high-level communication occurs in very different areas. A wave breaking on a beach brings a world of information about events far out at sea. It can tell of winds and storms, the distance and the intensity. It can locate reefs and islands and many things, if you know the code. 